true. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous. I had been and am, but why will you say that I am mad? <laughs> the disease had sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all was the sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? <laughs> Hearken and observe how, how healthily, how, how calmly I, I can tell you the whole story. It is impossible to say how, how first the idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it, it haunted me day and night. Object there was none, passion there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold, I had no desire. I, I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. One of his eyes resembled that of a vulture, a, a pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus to rid myself of the eye forever. Now, this is the point. You. Fancy me mad. Well, Madmen know nothing, but you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded, with what caution, with what foresight. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. <laughs> and every night, about midnight, I, I turned the latch of his door and I opened it, oh, so gently, and then when I had made an opening sufficient for my head, I, I put in a dark lantern, all closed, closed so that no light shone out, and then I thrust in my head. Oh, you would have laughed to see how, how cunningly I thrust it in. I moved it very slowly, very, very slowly, so that I might not disturb the old man's sleep. It took me an hour to place my whole head within the opening so far that I could see him as he lay upon his bed. <laughs> now, would a madman have been so wise as this? And then, when my head was well in the room, I undid the lamp cautiously. Oh, so cautiously I undid it just so much that a single thin ray fell upon the voucher eye. This I did for seven long nights, every night at midnight. But I found the eye always closed, and so it was impossible to do the work. For it was not the old man that vexed me, but his evil eye. And every morning when the day broke, I... I went boldly into the chamber and spoke courageously to him, calling him by name in a hearty tone and inquiring how he had passed the night. So you see, he would have been a very profound old man indeed to suspect that every night, just at 12, I looked in upon him while he slept. Upon the eighth night, I, I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. A watch's minute hand moves more quickly than did mine. Never before that night had I felt the extent of my own powers. I, I could scarcely contain my feelings of triumph. I had my head in the room and was about to open the lantern when my thumb slipped on the tin fastening and the old man sprang up in the bed crying out, Who's there? 